Well, you wouldn't think the country of Myanmar, used to be Burma, would have an awful lot in common with the United States, but it turns out they do. They have something fundamentally in common. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this is your mystery question of the day. Apparently, the United States and Myanmar are the only two countries in the world that are not using the metric system, to which I reply, 50% of the countries in the world using the imperial system have been to the moon. That's an impressive, that's an impressive statement. Uh, the reason I was talking about this story today was I saw something about a man who was definitely against the metric system. He was basically finding signs on the metric system and pasting up what it, the equivalent was in, in uh, miles. And I had thought for sure that this story was taking place uh, here in America. Turned out that was in Britain. That's fighting a losing battle. But here in America, there's only one freeway, only one stretch of road that is officially on the metric system, and that's Interstate 19 from Tucson south all the way to Nogales. And I've driven that many times. I have friends down there. Uh, Scotty, let's start with you. Few people have remarked that the that the uh, metric system sounds great. It's certainly good for science, but that in terms of its practical applications, it's pretty much useless. For example, uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit is very cold. Zero, de I'm sorry, is very hot. Uh, let me try no, that no, again. Very cold. <laughs> you zero you degrees right zero time. degrees Fahrenheit is very cold, and 100 degrees Fahrenheit is quite hot. Zero degrees centigrade is eh, 32, right? Yeah. 100 degrees centigrade, and you're, you're, you're dead. You're boiling. Uh, so it's a, it's a much more comfortable thing. Uh, my wife is uh, from Russia. She's, we've had to do the whole Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion. It is not automatically a better system, is it, Scotty? Because the French Revolution, they had a 10-month calendar and a 10-hour day, and look what happened to them during the glorious month of Thermidor. Well... <laughs> It is inherently better, Bill, because anytime you can get the whole world on a single standard, good things happen. As I was telling my friend in Esperanto the other day, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and, and your your snarky little remark about the moon. There's a there's a reasonable excuse or explanation for the why nobody else has been to the moon, and that's because they don't know how many miles away it is. And you just that's can't. That's precisely correct. You just, that's the problem. You can't do the calculations. You can't do the orbital calculations. If you don't how far know, is the how, yeah, if you don't know how many miles away it is, how are you ever going to get there? So, Brilliant. you know, I, it's Bill and I are men of a certain age, and uh, we are old enough to have recalled when the full court press was on um, mm -hmm. and to get the United States to convert uh, to metric. And the first thing they did, of course, was have us get excited about the Olympic Games. I mean, that's the way they insinuate themselves in there, you know, with all these meter dashes and things like that. And, it's you know, they kind of work bastards. that in. And then Saturday Night Live, of course, with uh, Dan Aykroyd's sketch on the decibet, the 10-letter uh, alphabet that went over. It's used throughout the rest of the world, but <laughs> it's not, not as much here in the United States. We, we kick those commies back to the continent back then, and we will continue to do it because there is some, there's something warm and friendly about measuring things in inches where those darling little yes. worms can, can stroke it off for you. You know, they can move along those little inch worms. The yes. foot is the actual measure of my foot. I can measure things with my uh, own feet. If I had to measure something in, you know, centiliters, uh, I would never know how long it was. Uh, or, or, how, or how full it was. Um, uh, that's the kind of the point for me, Steve. Um, now, it's interesting because if you go to Wikipedia, for example, any time a measurement is given, it's given in uh, metric and uh, standard or imperial uh, measurement, sometimes called English measurement. I suppose that's for the benefit of those people living in Myanmar. Uh, but um, it's interesting that this country is the only, essentially the only country in the, in the world with the uh, standard system. And everybody else still has to list them both. Listen, let me be clear on this, okay? The metric system is terrific for science. Oh, it's in, it's invaluable for science. Yeah. Absolutely. But my problem with the metric system is it makes things that aren't scientific sound scientific. It takes all of the romance and all of the charm, charm all the is heritage. The word. Yes. That, that's I'd walk, the exact word I was going to use. That's yeah. right. I, I'd walk 1.6 kilometers for a camel, you know, or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you know it just it's just all of it it's just it it's just it makes if you were to translate shakespeare into metric it would make hamlet sound like a german medical experiment 
Yeah, uh, there's a Dr. Mengele joke, and I'm not even going to touch that thing. Listen, um, thank you. <laughs> charm is the exact is the exact right word. Uh, there's a, uh, a, 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 a an old saying that I love. It's from uh, Charles II. Habsburg, who, uh, you know, big man about Europe, he was uh, emperor of this and uh, king of that and duke of the other thing. And it was just, uh, it lived all over the continent. And it, he said, uh, well, well, what's the exact quote? I, I speak French, or I speak Spanish to men, Italian to women, French to, no, no, excuse me. I speak French to men, Italian to women, Spanish to God and German to my horse. <laughs> and he, he, he left English out because England wasn't a wasn't a player yet, but uh, certainly the English speaking peoples have have made ourselves uh, players since then. And you know every language does have uh, has uh, has has a different ear. The uh, the East Asian languages tend to be uh, just just flowing and lyrical. Um, uh, 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 the Romance languages are well romantic sounding it's that's why we have that word and english is charming it's uh it's a little silly it's goofy it, english is the most playful language that i know uh you can you can do puns in english on almost anything and in other languages are just much much more difficult to, to come by and are often often are just uh, more clever than they are than they are funny and and we lose that uh, to, to european eyes English is 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 to strip away what made England uh, special and and separate from the continent, and I bet you that every single one of these guys, I think it's called the uh, Anti Metrification Society or something. In That's the one. Yeah, that are they're going around changing these road signs with stickers. I bet you every single one of these guys voted uh, yes on Brexit. You God bet. God bless them, and I hope they bring I hope they bring the imperial system back to its homeland because we saved it here now it's your turn britain do what you got to do i just have two things really to close about this with um again with the with a clear understanding that for science it's it's really quite useful to have everybody on the same system and so in fact we lost a space probe because the designers built it on the standard system and the uh and the uh, ground controllers used mes metric which turned out didn't work out so well um but the two things i want to say are this first of all the, the metric system, the meter is not based on anything. It was supposed to be one six hundredth or whatever the distance from the pole to the equator, but the meter is just an arbitrary rod of metal that sits someplace, and, and that's what they use all their standards for. And, and so there's nothing magical about the meter. Um, and the problems that you have to deal with in everyday life are not solved by the metric system. If I have to worry about, I've got to go 265 miles and I'll be traveling 65 miles an hour, that's no, no easier to solve if I say I've got to go 265 kilometers at 65 kilometers an hour. It's the exact same problem. So there's that. But by far the most important thing about this to me is the, pres is the preservation of the, of the charm of English. English's vocabulary is astonishing. English is such a remarkable language because it was born at a time when all of these Germanic uh, Romance languages were coming together in Europe and also at the beginning of the printing press when one printer would spell one thing one way and somebody else would spell it another way. That, that's interesting, but what, what we would miss is I can't imagine how you would have the same reaction to 20,000 leagues under the sea you know, if it were, uh, what, what would that be, 9,000 meters, uh, 9,000 kilometers under the sea. And, and Mark Twain writing about his life as a, as a riverboat pilot and talking about fathoms. It's fathoms. When something is fathoms, it's, it's six feet deep, right? That's a, uh, I'm sorry, three feet deep, I think, is a fathom or six. It doesn't matter. I think it's six feet. And his name wouldn't My be Twain is, either. N that's no, right. that's right, because it, it was two fathoms deep. This... This metric system doesn't get us anything that's worth losing the warmth and the charm and the, and the kind of historical um, significance of it. When, when somebody writes that something is leagues and leagues away, it has a... It has a it's romantic. It has a non it, yes, it has a non-mathematical impact. And that's what I'm trying to preserve as a writer in the English language. And so, as I said... Uh, both uh, Myanmar and the America are the only, well, one of the 50% of us have been to the moon, and we did it on the, on the uh, standard system. Y'all, the rest of y'all can just kiss our butts. <laughs> <laughs> Ten times. 
I want to point to the scoreboard, you know? Six flags over Luna. Um, <laughs> that'll do it for my little chauvinistic episode of nonsense for uh, today. But uh, I thought it was interesting, and I, and I love to talk about those kind of things. By the way, 10 is a very unstable number. Uh, for Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Uh, thank you very much for your membership here at BillWhittle.com. We'll see you next week.